And we also have the most honorable Judge Tifteller here to present the program today. I believe this is major. Uh, uh, the, four, the floors uh, is the primary person who's going to show this. So we'll turn this over to, to Judge LeFleur. You give all a big hand. Thank you very much. So before we get started, they told me I had about 45 minutes to explain the intricate process of courthouse restoration. So I'll probably take about 55 because I like to talk. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I am very excited uh, for the opportunity to share with each and every one of you a landmark in Upshur County history of a courthouse restoration. Uh, I won't bore you with the process of how Upshur County got into this. I believe Judge Tim Teller has explained that. Uh, it's been about 20 years in the works. Uh, the current commissioner court picked up the mantle and, and ran with it and stepped off into it when they got the grant from the Texas Historical Commission. I'm here to kind of show you what's going on in the inside of the courthouse. You know, everybody's driven by it. It's got scaffolding and junk piled up in the yard and folks walking around. But nobody's really seen the inside of it yet. And I asked Elena if she would invite me back in probably another six months so you can see the progress of what's going on because it is, it is an intricate process. It's uh, very long process uh, and there's a whole lot of work that's put into this. I put in about 60 hours a week just on this project on top of being a county judge in Marion County and working part-time at the funeral home uh, and I'm proud to do it because I just, courthouses, I have a passion for them. There's a lot of good things that happen in courthouses and there's a lot of bad things that have happened in courthouses. They are the focal point of any community. Uh, I'll give you an example. When you get back to your office, if you will Google historic Smith County Courthouse and see how beautiful that structure was that was torn down because it couldn't be used anymore. And now look where Smith County is today. They had to pass a $180 million bond that the taxpayers are going to have to pay every cent of to build a new courthouse because they have outgrown what they currently have. If they would have kept what they had, they would have plenty of room today. And we'll get into that shortly when I start showing you pictures. We are gaining a whole floor of offices in Upshur County. Which means probably for the next 20 years, Upshur County won't have to do anything else. Even as fast as you guys are growing, we're going to gain a lot of office spaces. Uh, I'll be quiet and start showing you pictures and then I just want to ask some <coughs> questions that anybody has. Elena, if you will go to the second picture. So everybody, if I would assume everybody's been in the county clerk's office. This is what it looked like a year ago, two years ago. Uh, stuff everywhere. You can see all of these, what look like small columns. All that is is wiring that thick to get internet and data into the building or into the room and into each one of those computer uh, stations for people to look up their own records. If we'll go back. And we'll go to the third one, current. This is what it looks like now. We've removed all of the wiring. we removed all the false ceiling. I don't know if you guys can tell, but around there is like a seafoam green color. That's the original color of that room. Nobody has seen that ceiling in 70 years. This is the original ceiling of the county clerk's office. In that ceiling right here, I'm sorry, I can't do this. You can see where it looks like stuff's been ripped out. Those are panels that were put on top of the plaster probably in the 60s for the sound. Black people wore hard bottom shoes, leather shoes and folks, the courthouse would be busy and you couldn't hear if you were having a conversation. So I would assume probably in the 60s, maybe early 70s, the commissioner's court uh, bought that, that sound barrier to place on the ceiling. But you can see how open it is. All of the stuff that's under plastic is original. <coughs> it's original to the building so it'll all get refurbished and placed back in there. 
these tables are no longer needed. The, the commissioner's court, prior to moving out, built a uh, county clerk depository for her to be able to bring all the physical records of Upshur County and place them in a controlled environment so that they can continue to restore those while everything else is going to be electronic. So there won't be the necessity for all those large uh, bookcases, which in the future, as the county clerk's office grows, there'll be more people working in there, and there's more office space on that floor. We'll go back. And to the first one. This is just a close-up of those ceiling tiles. You can see this hand-painted stenciling on them goes all the way around that room. And it's, it's, it's pretty neat. Again, I doubt anybody that's in this room has seen that, and if you have seen it, you probably don't remember it because you were very young. And then we'll go back to that, right? This one? Yep. This is going to be the southeast view. Again, that's what the clerk's office looked like a year and a half ago. All of this HVAC up here is going to be removed as well. If you go back one picture, see this HVAC that's hidden, all that's going away. That wasn't original to the building. Uh, a lot of you may or may not know that the Upshur County Courthouse had a hot setting or a cold setting. You either wanted the building to be warm or you wanted it to be cold. We're doing away with that. Now, every office is going to be acclimated to how the employees of that building want to do, want the air temperature to be, which reduces the cost of heating and cooling that building. We'll go to courtroom looking at balcony. So one, two, three. The next one up before. So this was the district courtroom. So this was the district courtroom where the Justice Center is now, where Judge Fowler sits. That was the district courtroom back in the 30s when this, when this building was built. <coughs> this all is the HVAC system for the entire courthouse. That's the brain of it. Behind this wall were those two filter vents are. All of the seating is original. The bar is original. The bench is original. These chairs are original. All of that will be restored. So we're going to take that all off site, sand it all down, clean it up, make it look real nice. This ugly carpet is gone. We're going to put wood in there, make it look original. I'm going to miss that miniature golf carpet. Indeed. Since <laughs> 74, so y'all can leave your putters at home. This was the jury room for the district courtroom. That door you see to the right. We can go to the next one. Where's that room now? It's still there. But I mean, it's not you. It was just storage. It's full junk. Is it? Oh, okay. It's a library, law library. But I don't know about that. That's across the street in the commissioner's court. If you walk out of the district courtroom or the commissioner's courtroom, where well, those, well, those vents are at now, they used to be a balcony. Are they going to put the balcony back up there? That's what I'm showing you. Next picture. picture. There's the balcony. So we ripped all that out. And. There is a balcony up there that will have stadium seating in it. You see all this old HVAC? That's all going away. You can see the framing for the old ceiling mm -hmm. up there. So we've already ripped the, all that old HVAC out. Some of you may have driven past there and there was a heaping pile of sheet metal and fiberglass. That was, that's what was ripped out of there. And you can see the old windows. Uh, all that paneling that's going away. All of this is going to be replastered. The flooring, a lot of people get stuck on flooring. You know, what's the floor going to look like? Well, in 1935, it was concrete, and that's what it's going to go back to. THC is uh, very adamant on putting that courthouse back the way it was when it was built with creature comforts, internet, air conditioning, things of that nature. All right. So. Looking from the bench wall, courtroom looking at bench wall. Correct. This one? That one, yes, ma'am. No, next one. You just hit that arrow. No. Yep. So there's the door to the courtroom, the bench. It's just looking from the courtroom. The jury room is now there, but the jury room used to be back here. And we'll go to the next one. We'll get to the fifth floor. 
A lot of people have never seen the fifth floor jail area from elevator. Jail area from elevator area. So when you got off the elevator on the fifth floor of the Upshur County Courthouse, that's what you saw. That is the entrance of the old jail. To the left here was the control station. So there was a control panel that controlled all the doors and, and every bit of that. And you can probably hit an arrow to the right. There you go. Wow. This is just walking around. This is prior to construction, mind you, or deconstruction. That's the way that place looked, with the exception of, I believe every file from 1935 to date was stuffed on the fifth floor because it was a good place to put stuff like that. I think you can hit an arrow. That is what it looks like now. So what's going to happen with this floor is it's going to look like a modern office building. THC doesn't have any regulations on when you rip a jail out what goes on the fifth floor because in 1935 it was a jail. So we've opted to, to turn it into uh, some pretty nice offices for whenever they are needed uh, with uh, lobby and, and different security measures. If you look at in the concrete, there's indentions all throughout. That's where the cells were actually seated inside the concrete. And we've got some structural problems that we're working on up there as they added things like indoor plumbing. Here you can see it. They went through the ceiling of the courthouse. Well, that's a big no-no because then you get into the structural bones of the building where, you know, if we set a wall up there, that wall may fail. So we're having to do those repairs. The windows, the windows are boarded up. Uh, they were bricked in, They're no longer bricked in. We're going to replace all of those windows. So the fifth floor of the courthouse is going to be as lit up as the, the first three floors. Uh, yes? Would you say offices, would you use cubicles or would you use actual offices? Walls? Offices, yes, sir. <coughs> that may be all I have now. I'm not sure. Yeah. Hit that last one just to be sure. Oh, so that's some more demo, and here is the elevator shaft. That's getting removed. That old elevator is going bye-bye, and we're going to put a new elevator in so that it'll last 50 more years. We won't have to fool with it. I think from the time that we started moving out of the building to date, till we decommissioned it about three weeks ago, the elevator company came to Upshur County probably once a month. And I don't know if you've ever paid an elevator company to Great. come out. They charge like six fifty an hour to start, <clears throat> including travel time and parts. So we won't have that problem anymore as well. So that's all the pictures we have to date. Um, I will entertain any questions. How do you handle HVAC? HVAC will be room by room basis, like splits. So how do you get cooling air to the to the room? So each room will have its own unit, own like unit. a window unit, yeah. but it's it's hidden away. It's about that big and it just blows air out. Yeah. And everything's everything else is when they go through put the electrical lines and everything else, they'll they'll drill through that plaster wall and cover everything up so you won't be able to see anything. Yeah, on that you said the courtroom is gonna have the same in floor. Did it not have the same tile or the, or the marble or whatever it was that's on the hallways? No, sir. Never did? Mm -hmm. not, there's no evidence that we can find that oh, had no. anything other than the concrete. Because in my opinion, and, and THC and I are having a, a bit of a disagreement, in my opinion, the only room in that entire building when that courthouse was built that had those sound paneling was in the district courtroom. I think the commissioner's court added it throughout the courthouse, probably in the 60s or 70s, because frankly, in 1935, we were way deep in the Great Depression, and they weren't going to spend an extra penny on that building for any reason whatsoever. <coughs> Funding questions? I have two questions. Go ahead, Steve. Well, number one, uh, you, you, keep, you referred to the district courtroom. Are you talking about the county courtroom now? Yes. Okay. So that okay. And so what about the um, 
uh, the those data. Everybody now is using you know internet. So how do you how do you service those kiosks for those desks now? Are you going? How's that wiring going? To go? So again, everything will be trenched out. Let's say this was a plaster wall. Obviously, it's not. They they put trenching in throughout the whole room. Okay. Let's say there were ten cube desks in here. They would trench behind each one of those desks and they would put the electrical data, whatever, right. and then they would plaster back over it. So then you just have an outlet. Right. Yes, I was just going to ask about studies for acoustics, or in other words, how, how well you could hear or can't hear hard concrete floor or hard plaster wall. I don't know what kind of areas this is because I'm not an expert on it, but I know some buildings you can't hardly hear very good. You get acoustical feedback from the walls and stuff. Have they studied that and kind of see where they need it? So once, it? once we start putting everything back, we'll have a company come in and do an acoustics test. I'll tell you, I'll give you an example of what we did in Marion County because we had the same <clears throat> type of courtroom except we had the low ceilings and we had the ugly carpet and we had the paneled walls and you could hear beautifully in there. And then we opened it up and we added nine feet to the ceiling by concrete flooring and everything else is wood and glass. So the first time I had court in that building, the attorneys had to literally lean over the bench so that we could have conversations as if they used to stand at their desk and they could address the court and the jury could hear them. What we did is we went and found a whole lot of old, beautiful, antique, ornate rugs and we laid them in there because we couldn't apply anything permanent into the courtroom. And that's against THC regulations. Uh, THC owns that building for a year after we moved back in. After 12 months, they come and they do a walkthrough and then they never come back. And whatever happens after that, happens after that. Currently, I'm in the process of getting runners back <coughs> our courtroom in between the benches. We put cushions on the benches in the courtroom, like church cushions. I had a company out of Virginia come and they made these real pretty bench cushions that are not permanent. We can remove them at any time and make it look just like it did in 1912. Uh, so we just we just found ways around it, and it, it works really nice now. That's a great question. So the funding for this, uh, we won't get into nickels and dimes, but let's say this project cost $16 million. We're just south of $16 million. Uh, THC, the Texas Historical Commission, is funding about 41% of this. The taxpayers of Upshur County are funding theoretically about 40% of this. The rest of that money is coming from ARPA funding. And it's all being done completely debt free. There's one in 10 courthouses that are restored in the state of Texas that are done completely debt free to the taxpayer. Again, when I started, we talked about the predicament Smith County's in. That's a fairly conservative county. I have no idea how they passed that bond. <laughs> but, you know, to be able to do this and walk away from it and not have to make a payment on it, that is a phenomenal thing to do. And you got the money, the builder needs it, you know, why not spend it on it? And then you, you, you save so much history. Just, if those walls could talk, Yes, ma'am. What will they do to restore the outside? What, what changes will happen then? So, uh, it's a process, I'll tell you that. They're, they meticulously go through that. You can't just power wash it. It's all chemically treated to get all the old mold and everything off. Where it can be power washed is a very low pressure power wash and it goes through there and then everything is sealed. And they seal it off really well and they fix any mortar that needs to be repaired. I'll, I'll give you an example of, of something. Plastering throughout that building has been cut out in places and sent off to a university so that they could excise what exactly that was made out of, horsehair, all kinds of things. And the way THC looks at this is they have to find an artificial replacement for that horsehair, but it has to be in there. They have to put that plaster back on the wall just like they did, or as close as they can get it to the way it was put in in 1935. So it, this, I'm telling you, it's a process. I think they, we fought over the paint schemes of that building for two months, and I don't think that fights over, but that's neither here nor there.
Yes, ma'am. How long is it going to take for everything to be done? So the end major completion date is what they call it. So the major completion date is going to be Christmas of 2025. As long as everything goes just so, which nothing ever goes just so. Right now, fingers crossed, we've got, we're 65% through deconstruction. And if there were any monsters in the closet that we couldn't see, they had already shown themselves. Can't recall the name of the county. There's a county down in South Central Texas. They started taking out a lot of their H back. It's in the basement, just like Upshur County. So they started taking these big machines out, and the, the, the foundation of this courthouse, it flooded. Every, if it rained an inch, there'd be four foot of water in the bottom of this thing. Well, they had to remove all the concrete, come up with French drainage and everything. Well, when they removed that concrete, they found an Indian burial site. <laughs> four years later, after the state got finished with that, they were able to continue with their courthouse restoration. We ain't found nothing. We ain't looking for nothing. Hope we don't find nothing. <laughs> so you can imagine the cost of the taxpayers of that because the state doesn't pay for whatever you're out. <laughs> so they already gave you their grant. But we haven't found any monsters in the closet yet. So we're we're doing pretty good. We're we're ahead of schedule right now. Yeah, there you go. We're ahead of, we're ahead of schedule and I hope we stay that way. Yes, sir. Will there have to be any changes made to the north entrance out there where the fountain and the Bricks and all are. Yes, sir. So there's there's going to be a significant amount of changes on the grounds to keep water from going into the bottom of the courthouse because currently water goes in the bottom of that courthouse. A lot of people don't know that when it rains significantly, uh, the the basement does fill up with water. It did that two months ago, something like that. Well, we had that freeze. Yeah. <clears throat> and you might want to tell them we're going to have to replace that main water. Peter still, luckily we got it shut off. It was like the Poseidon Adventure. Yeah. But so before that, a rain flooded it two or three years ago. But that was some stopped up gutters. There's some drainage underneath both sets of stairs on the north and south side that are really in bad, bad way. So all that breaking is going to come off. All that's going to be repaired and everything's going to get put back the way it was. Yes, ma'am. What will the temporary building be? It'll go away. It'll go away. It'll go away. Yeah. Lou, you had some hands up over there. Oh, no. <laughs> they weren't, they were talking to each other. Oh. When you say that, so we're just renting those at this time? Yes, ma'am, we're okay. leasing those. Okay. It was lease for <clears throat> 700000 renovate something else for another million, million two, or build something for a million and a half, million seven. We don't have to work on what we're in. Something happens, we call them, they come fix it. I mean, it just, it just made the best sense. And we had the area too. Absolutely, <laughs> thank God. Mm -hmm. So, go back over, what are you gonna do to the front where the fountain is and the bricks and all that? Kind of they're, they're gonna remove most of that and change the, the way the courthouse drains when the water comes down the sides of it. There's some, some major issues there. And as far as the fountain's concerned, I haven't, be honest with you, I haven't looked in the plans to see if we're even touching that thing. Just because we've been so worried on deconstructing the inside of the building. Um, I, I couldn't give you an honest answer. I, I can definitely get back with you on that. I had so to look the bricks in the plans. that are, people have paid for the bricks? Those are, those are staying right where they're at. Okay. If they need to be removed, they'll be replaced. Anything else? What about any, any kind of landscaping around the building itself? Absolutely. Uh, we haven't gotten there because that is not a, uh, that's not something THC is involved in. So yeah. once they leave, the commissioner's court can argue over that. I'll be back in Marion County and they can argue over <laughs> <all> that. <laughs> hey, look, are they going to continue to use the same block? The same what? The clock. The clock. I don't think so. Those are, those are not historic. Those, those were I put those up. Okay, so there is a new design to make the clocks look like they did in, when they were put in, whenever that was. But those are in the plan. Yeah. All right, I think I've taken all my time. <laughs> all right, I'm good. Just before, thank you for being here and presenting today.
today. Judge Jeff Teller, thank you for being here. Steve, glad you were here. Uh, before I forget, I think if you'll look at your table, 